everybody. Thank you for joining us here at Altitude University. Today we're going to be talking about traffic pattern procedures. To start off, we can split up our airports between towered and untowered airports. Our untowered airports, our pilots are communicating with each other on the CTAF or the Common Traffic Advisory Frequency. At towered airports such as our Class Bravo, Charlie and Delta, ATC or Air Traffic Control is the one who's giving those clearances and instructions to the pilots. As you can see in our example here, the airport depicted on the left hand side is in magenta, which means that it is an untowered airport. The frequency is identified by a solid circle with a C in the middle of it. As you can see here, this magenta C is following the frequency 122.9, which means that the CTAF frequency is 122.9. Now that's also going to be depicted at towered airports, and towered airports are shown in blue on our VFR sectional charts. When the tower is not in operation at a towered airport, pilots also will talk on the CTAF frequency and is charted the exact same way. As you can see in Reading Airport, they have 119.8 with a star, which means that the airport tower only operates between certain hours and you would check the chart supplement to find those hours. And then they also have this solid blue circle with a C in the middle of it meaning that the CTAF frequency is 119.8 for Reading Regional Airport. When we're talking about a standard traffic pattern, the TPA or traffic pattern altitude is typically 1000 feet AGL or above ground level. If it's anything other than standard, that will be charted or displayed in the chart supplement. The standard direction for our traffic pattern is left traffic. This means that all turns in our pattern will be made to the left. If it is right traffic pattern, it will be charted as such. While flying in the traffic pattern, the banks of the aircraft should not exceed 30 degrees and runways are all aligned with magnetic north. If your traffic pattern is anything other than standard, it will be charted as such. For example, if the direction of the traffic pattern is right pattern, it will be shown on the VFR sectional chart. As you can see in this example for Red Bluff Municipal Airport, at the very bottom we have RP15. That means for runway 15, we're going to be using right traffic pattern as opposed to the standard left traffic pattern. Let's talk about the different legs of the pattern. Our first one is our upwind, which is our departure leg. On this example, you can see that the aircraft is departing on runway 36, which means as they depart and they fly their upwind leg, then their heading is also 360. After our upwind leg, once the aircraft is 300 feet below traffic pattern altitude, they're going to make their turn to their crosswind. Now their crosswind is used as a transition leg between our upwind and our downwind. It's going to be a 90 degree turn, either left or right, depending if you are left or right traffic pattern. So it's going to be perpendicular from our upwind leg. Next, we have our downwind leg, and the downwind is flown parallel to our intended runway of landing, which means that our heading is going to be opposite of our landing runway. So if we are landing on runway 36, then while we are flying the downwind leg, our heading will be 180. The downwind leg is typically flown about a half mile to one mile away from the runway. The downwind leg is flown until the aircraft reaches about 45 degrees from the intended landing point past the runway. So as you can see in the graphic here from the FAA, the aircraft actually flies past the runway until they reach a 45 degree angle from their point of landing. At that point, then they will turn their base leg. This base leg is also used as a transition from the downwind to the final leg of the pad. Uh... The base leg is used as a transition from the downwind to our final leg of the pattern. Now from the downwind to the base and final, the aircraft is now descending so that it can come in and land. 
The base leg is going to be perpendicular with the runway and it's going to be 90 degrees off of our runway heading assuming that there is no wind. And then lastly we have the final leg of the pattern which is our landing leg which means our heading will be aligned with the runway. As you can see in this example, on final, the aircraft would be landing on runway 36, which means that their heading would be 360. Now, when an aircraft is entering the pattern from outside the airport environment, they are suggested to do so by entering the downwind leg at a 45 degree entry. As you can see in the graphic here, an aircraft is coming from the northeast direction, and they're coming in at a 45 degree angle to then enter the downwind leg. Now where this gets confusing is the aircraft is coming in and they have to make a right turn to enter that downwind. However, this is left pattern because all of the rest of the turns are made to the left in order to make it to the runway. So the aircraft comes in entering on the 45, they make a right turn to enter our downwind leg, which is a parallel to our runway. And then eventually they're going to make it to their base leg where they make a left turn. And then from the base leg to the final leg is another left turn making this left traffic pattern. Now let's get into some questions that you might see on the part 107 written test regarding traffic pattern operations. This question here asks, refer to figure 23. What does the magenta C mean next to the 122.8 frequency at the Claxton Evans County Airport mean in area two? So what we're looking for is area two on figure 23 in the Claxton Evans Airport, which we can identify here. Now it's asking what the magenta C next to the frequency 122.8 means. Our answer here is B, the common traffic advisory frequency. The magenta C or blue, depending on the airport, is always gonna follow the CTAF frequency. So in this example, it is 122.8. While monitoring the Cooperstown common traffic advisory frequency, you hear an aircraft announce that they are midfield left downwind to runway 13. Where would the aircraft be relative to the runway? figure 26, area two. So we have a zoomed in picture of Cooperstown here. Now, if the aircraft is landing on runway 13, that means that the direction they're landing is with a heading of 130. So we can assume that this aircraft is landing in the southeast direction. Now, the aircraft states that they are left downwind, which means that they are now flying parallel and in the opposite direction of the runway intended to land on, which means that our aircraft is flying towards a northwest heading, and they're going to be to the right side of the runway because they are making left turns to then make it to the runway to land, which means that in this example, our aircraft is located over here. So our answer here is east. Our aircraft is located east of the runway. Where can pilots find traffic pattern information and restrictions such as noise abatement? Either A, the sectional chart, B, aeronautical information manual, or C, the chart supplement. While the sectional chart does have some basic information about the traffic pattern for that airport, it doesn't have all the necessary information we need to know before entering that airport. So our answer here is going to be C, the chart supplement. If there's anything non-standard or any certain procedures we need to follow at that airport, we're gonna find that information in the chart supplement. An aircraft announces that they are left downwind for runway 16. This means that the aircraft is on a heading of, well, if our aircraft is on a left downwind for runway 16, we know that when they are flying the downwind, then their heading is going to be the reciprocal of 160. So our answer here is 340 or 340 degrees. A quick way to do that is you would take 160, add 180, that'll give you the reciprocal, and we have the answer of 340 degrees. Thank you for joining us here today. We hope you enjoyed our video on traffic pattern operations. Happy flying.